Can you explain the relationship between Yeshua ben Padia and Hassan ibn Sabah? Yeshua ben Padia was, supposedly, the author of an apocryphal grimoire from the Gospels era called the Angel Scroll that may be a missing link between the earlier Enochian apocryphal tradition and the later medieval European Solomonic grimoires. According to the Sanhedrin trial documents of Yeshu, whom Christians worship as the Messiah, they compared Yeshu to one Bar Pandera, who, according to the Toledoth Yeshu, a Dark Ages apocrypha, stole a holy name from a temple in Egypt by hiding it within, uh, written on a small scroll inside a cut he made on his skin. Yeshu Bar Pandera then used this holy name to perform miracles, as did Jesus, according to the Gospels, cure the sick using only the power of his word. Whether the Bar Pandera referred to in the Sanhedrin trial documents and in Taladoth Yeshu, Toledoth Yeshu, is the same person as Jesus of Nazareth, called the Christ in the Gospels, or whether either of these is the same person as the alleged author of the Angel Scroll remains unknown as of now, late 2023 A.D., the beginning of the first era of the Aeon of Gemini, some 2,000 years ago, and the end of this first era, was the ascension to the perch of Alamut by the old man of the mountain, Hassan e Sabah, around some 1050 until 1124 AD. Book and the first era in the direct midst of which we find the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from around 570 to 632 AD. So one can point out, just as Jesus reigned during a changing of the aeons, Muhammad ruled at the first apex point to follow this. So we find the old man of the mountain, Hassan e Sabah, to be an interesting syncretism of traits expressed both by Jesus in his gospel teachings and by Muhammad in the Noble Quran. The Hashishin order, begun by Sabah, relied on terror tactics to spread its influence throughout the Crusades era holy lands. Sabah learned from the apparent mistake of Jesus' ultimate pacifism and from the militant activism of the Prophet of Islam. In Aphorism 16 of the Gnostic Apocryphal Gospel of Thomas, Jesus said, Perhaps people think that I have come to cast peace upon the world. They do not know that I have come to cast conflicts upon the world. Fire, sword, war. For there will be five in a house, there will be three against two, and two against three, father against son, and son against father, and they will stand alone. And so too, in Matthew 10, 34 through 36, it is written, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. In the Noble Quran, Surat 9, verse 73 and 66, verse 9, the prophet admonishes, Strive against the disbelievers with the sword, and against the hypocrites with your tongue. Taking such sayings as these to heart, Sabah founded the Assassin's Order on a false promise of an afterlife in paradise 
made to the fidein, literally meaning in Arabic, those who sacrifice themselves. Attainable only on the grounds they murder in the name of and are prepared to die themselves for the cult. Some speculate that the assassin's order used hashish, made by mixing marijuana keef with poppy resin, exclusively for the function of mind control over its members. However, it is just as likely such a large-scale secret society could not have operated without the additional telepathic powers this drug can imbue. The assassins flourished from 1090 until 1275 AD and had outlived their founder by two further generations when they finally surrendered to the Mongol invasion of Persia. So, essentially, we find the first era of the last aeon began with Yeshua ben Padia and concluded with the lifetime of Hassani Sabah, and that between these two came the Hijra of Muhammad in 622 A.D.